Hey guys, still here and welcome back to Transport Fever 2. This is another showcase and this is Nidos Moivia. Um, it is, according to, and I had to look this up, according to Google, it's a commune in the Hauteurin uh, department in Grand Est in northeastern France. It was created by a guy called Thomas Game France. Link down below in the description to uh, this Steam Workshop save file. It is enormous. It is absolutely enormous. Um, the guy, I think, built this town, or rather these towns, because it's not just one town, it's a whole lot of them. Um, and he, I think, tried to get a representation of the town in-game. Now, he says that there are uh, various bus routes, tram routes, uh, we even have an airport over here. There is a lot going on. I'm going to try to cover at least some of it. And he did warn me, uh, at least in the Steam page description, that frame rate can be a bit of an issue. Now, I can't really imagine why, because <laughs> holy shit, <laughs> there's buildings all over the place. Uh, they even have a passenger dock over here, a port. Now, I'm not sure if it's connected to anything. Yes, I think this is not so much a... Um, an actual money-making transport route, nor do I think that's the goal because he's running with the unlimited cash on this particular save. And I think it's just to signify that, hey, there is a dock over here. Uh, people can move to, well, this off-site dock, which, let's be honest, doesn't do much. Uh, there's not exactly going to be a lot of demand over here. It's just set up there to make sure that these ships have somewhere to go to. So I am tentatively going to press the uh, speed one and see exactly what happens. Yeah, the game is already starting to freeze and stutter. Now, supposedly we have a lot of lines. Let's see. Oh, yes. We have uh, two train lines. The RERA and the RERB. The RERA, what sort of stations do you have? Uh, that's going from uh, Nidesmoga Center to the airport. Okay, so that's one line. What's the other line doing? The RERB. Where are you? Saint Jean de Champ. Where's that? Oh, here. Okay, so they start here and they go here. Right, so this might be a little um, a suburban area, I suppose. Although my image of suburban areas usually does not include high-rise buildings like these. So they got a couple of trains going that way. Now I'm always curious, how do they set up the train lines? Uh, pretty straightforward. This is also something that I can improve upon. He has built his platform where one platform is longer than the other. Mine are always the same size. So my train station is usually just one flat block, which kind of makes it dull to look at, and this is actually a more uh, beautiful way of doing it. Now, in case you might not recognize these buses, I wouldn't really blame you, because this is a bus that I believe is not standard in the game. This particular save game requires a couple of additional uh, vehicles, and this would be one of them, the e -Citero. And the e is um, found on the Steam Workshop as well. The guy on his Steam page for the save game has an overview of what mods are required, and the game simply refuses to load the, the save game if you don't have those additional DLCs or additional um, mods installed. One thing that he also has installed over here is the uh, achievement mod, which means that on a modded game you can still get achievements. So if that's something that you don't like, if you don't want to be getting achievements through means that uh, you really shouldn't be getting, then I would recommend against loading this map. It's just not going to go very well. Now we got our first airplane coming in. There's another airplane going out. Look at that town. Holy shit. The scope of this place is enormous. Now we're coming in for landing. I do like how this airport is tied in with all these trees around here. Got our landing lights over here and I think our takeoff lights uh, further up ahead where the other aircraft might be. 
Or are these just two taxiways? That's another possibility. No, it's two runways. Yeah, we got another landing light slash takeoff light over here. And... Oh, he has a cargo depot over here. Clever. So far, when I've set up airports, I've used the uh, pretty straightforward standard airport model, which you get from the game. Which is a terminal building, and then a hangar, uh, and then whatever else happens to be in a line. And he does it quite different, with cargo buildings on the other side. Making sure that you only have the passenger terminals over here. And he's not actually seemingly flying in cargo. There's just a couple of uh, avion lines. So... From what I'm gathering, he only flies passengers in and out. Also, actually, no, there is one cargo line coming in. I'm not exactly sure what it's trying to bring. But then again, I think it's mostly uh, aesthetics. He just has a couple of these lines with different airplanes to simulate that there are different airplanes landing on this particular airport. Now... Um, how much population do you imagine that this town has in total? Because I think it's going to run in the several thousands. Something in that region. So, let's uh, pull up a calculator and start calculating. We got 927 over here. That's in Norden. We got another 787 over here. Oh, sorry, that was uh, Flindersheim. This is Norden. Then we have 745 in the Ancienne. Uh, next island, Blendersheim. 648. We got uh, Cartier Allemand. 728. Stadsgrenze. <laughs> I think this is something that's very close to the German border, considering the particular German and French blends over here. Uh, Leimbach, 688. Nation, or nation, depending on how you want to pronounce that. 747. Uh, Lauterbach, 468. Côte West, 593. Jesus, I'm already up to almost 7,000 people living in this town. Uh, Centre, 604. And finally, Kiel, 881. I am currently, and that's going to change in a minute or two, uh, getting to an estimate of 8,385 people. Now, that's, of course, still not exactly an accurate representation of how many people would live in a town this size. But this is what the population is in-game. Now, he also has a load of bus and lines, uh, and tram lines, supposedly. I haven't even looked at those yet. Yep, we got trams A through E. Tram. Okay, where are you going? You start over here at the uh, train station, Gare Centrale. And you're going through the bridge over here. And you're stopping over here at the uh, Centre N and KT. Oh, by the way, this is the uh, HQ. This is the headquarters. So, the headquarters has its own command station over here. <laughs> it has its own... Uh, sorry. Blah, English. The HQ over here has its own transport hub. Its own little tram station. Lots of buses parked over here waiting to get into the main road. I imagine this main road can get pretty crowded. Let's see. Uh, traffic. Traffic. Yeah, that's pretty busy, that main road. Player owned. Oh, I didn't even know you could lock these things, actually. I suppose that this means that you can just turn on and off control of particular roads, allowing the AI to either build on them or just remove them. Jesus, look at this, the whole town's gridlocked. Now that, I would say, is a fairly accurate representation of a town this size. Look at this. Can we use this bus and move through all these buildings? Look at this. Wow. 
Now, I don't exactly know how he built this. I don't exactly know how he uh, placed down all these buildings, if this was done manually, or if he uh, actually developed this town. I don't know. I just know that the game starts on January 1st, 2020. So that means that there's a, uh, a pretty decent chance that the game is just built in the map editor, something like that. And that it hasn't seen that much action, because sure enough, the towns might be growing. But aside from that, you're not very likely to get a whole lot of uh, profitability out of it. Because if you zoom out the whole map, it does not transport anything. There's no goods, there's no fuel, there's no um, bricks, there's no tools being shipped, nothing. It's only passengers. Only passengers. Which, I mean, I don't find weird. Um... This is not supposed to be a money-making operation, unlike the previous uh, showcase that I did. This one is very much trying to be, um, at least from what I can gather, a representation of this particular town. And I gotta say, it looks really nice. All these little houses over here, sorry, industrial buildings, close to the train station. You really get the feel of being in a big town. Especially if you keep the camera at a pretty flat angle. Look at this. Now, I'm kind of curious how long this took the guy to actually build. How long it took to build, how long it took to set up. Because I wouldn't be surprised to find out that the trams and the buses are actually pretty on spot. With what the trams are doing in that particular area. Now, where are the other trams going? We got one going here. Delta line. One, two, three, four. It's over there. And Echo is over there. He has no trams running around here. Interesting. So is that area only serviced by buses then? Well, sort of. Let's see, how did he do this? We have a line that's going here. Here, here, here. That is, I think, bus 24. I suppose that they might be linking up over here. No, that's just an annex. You want to tie your bus lines together at some point. Otherwise the people are not really going to be using them that much. Over here we also got an annex, but not really any place where another bus also picks them up. Here... This might be it. Oh god, good luck getting your bus to transport people here. There is a uh, bus 24 over here. But, well... I think that the people might as well start walking, considering how gridlocked this town is. The bus is going to try and make a right turn, in which case it will free up quite a bit of the terrain and join the traffic jam that's right over there. Oh, I like the town design, but traffic is a nightmare. And even here, it's yeah, here it's even busier. All these high-rise buildings. There's... Uh, what is that? 12 residents here. 24 residents there. Commercial building with 64 shopping facilities. Eight of which are vacant. That means that a lot of traffic is going to try to get to these buildings. And uh, I imagine that the uh, Nouveau Bassin might be a very popular destination. But aside from that, the cars are going to be clogging up the roads anyway. Right. Anyway, um, that is going to conclude this showcase. Again, link down below in the description so you can have a look at the map, uh, see what he did with the lines, see how he brought all of these towns together, because sure enough, the game doesn't allow you to build one enormous town, but it does allow you to blend these things together, which is a way that I find rather intriguing. If you have a save game that you think I should look at, a uh, showcase for the next one, Please send it in through the link or through uh, uh, the comments down below and I will gladly have a look at it. And if you have your own save game that you think I should have a look at, then be sure to upload it to the uh, Steam Workshop as well and post, uh, post the link down below in the description, um, in the comments. Anyway, 
that's all for this one. Hope you enjoyed. Um, Thomas Game France, exceptionally well done. Really, really nice town. Well done. Uh, must have taken you a lot of time, but the result is worth it. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed it, and I shall catch you soon for the next one.